Now, tell me about your father. City Councilling on 95 BFM, our weekly chat with the good people of Auckland Council. Today, Councillor Pippa Coombe and Elena talked about how Auckland Council will be helping local businesses move down through alert levels, in particular how the council can help the hospitality industry with licensing requirements so that they can do trading on footpaths and allow more space between customers. They also talked about Vision Zero, an ethics-based transport safety approach that was developed in Sweden and is now being implemented in Auckland. The vision states that there will be no deaths or serious injuries on our transport system by 2050. Uh, Elena asked Pippa about how realistic this goal is, what concrete steps have already been taken to make our roads safer and what future plans are in place. So looking forward to next week, Auckland will shift alert levels to level three. If not next week, then surely in the future. Many Aucklanders will be hoping to support their favourite takeaway or delivery service. How can we support local businesses for one? And also, how is the uh, council supporting local businesses and supporting the Auckland population in general with this shift? Kia ora, yes, and everyone's looking forward to moving out of level four and especially with takeaways. It's amazing that we're in lockdown week five with them um, the support that council's able to provide there's there's definitely food parcels are still happening for the community because one thing of lockdown is it's really exposed the inequalities um, that we've got across Auckland and um, for for businesses of course it's been a massive struggle with not being able to trade normally and so council's looking at all of the options that we've got that can help support business. What options would those be at level three? Well, it's still going to be hard at a level three because, of course, there's only a bit more opening up. Um, and it's really the government that we've got to keep advocating for in terms of the, the business support and you know the wage subsidy, which everyone's hoping will continue into level two. Um, so we're really gearing up around... You know, what is it that we can provide in terms of support once we are able to open up a bit more? And it's things like, you know, for the hospo industry, they're looking at um, licensing requirements, you know, making sure that council can really turn things around quickly so that we can do trading on the footpaths. You know, how can we get, say, rest restaurants able to use footpath path space and, you know, car parks and just being more nimble in terms of a response. And I know also with business, um, particularly city centre businesses, you know, they're asking whether do we still have to have all of the MIQ based in the city centre? Um, that's probably a question more for government. Um, and, and then looking ahead as we get into level two, you know, what is the additional support we can provide to attract visitors to Auckland and get people out and about? With getting businesses more into the footpath, is that with a view to make more safe, as in there's more area for people to sit at cafes and hence more space between people, less chance of getting the virus? Yeah, so the advice is, you know, your best if you're outside, um, that, that's, that's best in terms of reducing transmission, but also there's going to be restrictions on the number of people that can dine inside. So I think it's 50 max. So that you know puts is quite restrictive for a lot of res restaurants that re rely on high turnover and you know lots of seating. So if we can use outside space, so it's been happening overseas, then I think that will be a big help. Right. Yeah. Because it seems these levels, these delta levels, are a bit different to the normal levels. I remember last year at level two, it used to be. I th I'm pretty sure it was 100 inside, but now. It's actually kind of a level 2.5, which is going to be quite tricky for, as you say, restaurants and cafes that rely on high turnover and lots of seating. Yeah, it will be very difficult. The Delta level 2, I think it's called. Swiveling topics a bit, I was wondering whether you can tell me about Vision Zero. What is it? Vision Zero is a road safety approach that we've adopted from Sweden, and it's taking the approach that we should be aiming for zero deaths and serious injuries on our road. And it's a whole systems approach. So it's looking at every single part of the transport system and saying if we aim for zero um, deaths and serious injuries, 
then we will do a whole lot of things differently. And it's a, it's a big aspiration, but it just is the best way that we can reduce the, the violence on our roads. Is it more of a guideline than an actual goal? Because it seems pretty inconceivable that by 2050 there'll be absolutely no deaths or serious injuries on Auckland roads. Well, I guess if you look at it, if you think about your neighbourhood, you, you think, OK, you haven't had any deaths or serious injuries in your neighbourhood, and that's, you know, that's the goal of zero, and it's just building that up. And if we can say that we could do that for um, our town centres, our wider community, our city, you know, then it is achievable if you break it down like that. Um, right, there will yeah. always be some kind of, you know, it's a system that, that, that when you have big objects flying around, there will inevitably be some kind of crash happening because people make mistakes. But what we can also limit is whether people walk away from those crashes or whether they suffer serious injuries or death. And that's within our control. Right. So we know that Vision Zero is obviously this kind of uh, guideline or goal. What concrete steps has it got in maybe changing speed limits or changing how the roads are made? Yeah, so there's a few factors. There's, there's definitely bringing down the speed is a big one. Um, because we know that if you, you know, if you hit at a lower speed, you're going to be more likely you're going to survive. Um, there's also the design of the road. There's also the um, education that's needed and the enforcement and also the acceptance that people make mistakes, like no one deserves to die. So it's putting people first and that's what we haven't always done in our road system. In New Zealand we've always focused on vehicle efficiency rather than prioritising the safety of people. Right, I see. And how would education play into it? How would you educate drivers beyond their initial getting of their driver's licence? What does ongoing road education mean? Education is just one part because it's things like having really good driver training, making sure everybody knows the road, road rules, and advertising things like the fact that speed limits have reduced. And that happened in the city centre last year but there hasn't been much of a campaign to let people know. But education's only one, you know, one part of it. We've got to pull on all of the levers that we've got to bring down deaths and serious injuries. Yeah, that advertising of the speed limits is an important one because I know a lot of people got caught out by that and people just didn't realise. There's not really a point in having these lowered speed limits if they're not known about and then obeyed or enforced. Yeah, it, it needs to be a bit of a campaign and there also needs to be enforcement like, so that we haven't seen yet the police do an enforcement campaign around the lower speeds. Right, so it has to be a collective team effort because obviously we can have these guidelines and everything but if people don't wear seatbelts or drive responsibly, things are still going to happen. In the same vein, we need the police to enforce things. Mm, that's a good way of putting it. It has to be a, a, a team effort. A Herald article came out a few days ago that reported that road deaths in Auckland have actually risen in the first year that speeds have been lowered as part of the Vision Zero plan. The number of deaths on Auckland roads almost doubled from 29 to 56 in the 12 months to the end of July this year, and serious injuries rose from 513 to 556 over the same period. How can Auckland Council promise such a plan when road use is always increasing and proportionately the number of injuries and deaths with it? Perhaps the COVID lockdown last year also played into these figures? Yeah, it's a really grim statistic. There's a few things there. I mean, we don't know what the impact of lockdown had in terms of reducing the deaths and injuries. That's probably a factor, but one of the things too is that where speeds have been reduced on those roads, um, there was also a corresponding reduction in DSI. So that was, you know, overall it, it doesn't look good, but in terms of where we have reduced speeds, it is starting to work. Um, but overall, you know, there's, it's a massive issue that we've still got an increasing um, death rate and it will only change once we have um, the, the roads are redesigned and we have enforcement.
So as of now, speed limits have been introduced in the central city to 30 kilometers per hour, and speed limits have also been introduced on other urban and rural roads. What else is in the pipeline for the Vision Zero plan? Because if this is something that is looking for 2050, I imagine there are other ways that the council would like to improve safety on the roads? Well, Auckland Transport does have a budget for for safety and there is work underway. For example, we've probably been seeing around the place like raised crossings, more pedestrian crossings, um, narrowing the road in certain places, interventions outside schools. That's all really good. But we know what will make the road safer, safer and what will get people walking and cycling is if there's safe infrastructure like cycleways and that's what is needed and there is some budget but but not enough and we need Auckland Transport to be doing a whole lot more. And that safe infrastructure needs to extend across the entirety of Auckland with safe infrastructure out west, out east, out south? Absolutely. Needs not just central. A whole network, yeah. If we have a whole network of safe walking and cycling that's what people will do. And it will also be good um, for drivers as well. It'll make it safer for drivers if everyone's in a, you know, got their separated infrastructure. Have you tried mindfulness? Try mindfulness. City Councilling on 95 BFM.